this morning. Turn with me in your Bibles to the book of Ephesians chapter number 2. Ephesians chapter number 2. Amen. Once again, those clock and clock right one day will all over me from here after the service. Maybe about 10 minutes. Give you to do what you need to do to get back to the room. Amen. And uh, remember tonight's service. Amen. Look forward to the Lord helping us this evening in service. Praise God. Ephesians 2, 19 and 20, the Word of God says, Now therefore, you are no longer strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God. I love that. Amen. That I'm not a stranger to the things and the people of God. I'm not a stranger to the blood of Jesus Christ. I'm not a stranger to this great gift of salvation. Amen. But God has brought us together. We're part of the household of God. Amen. That's a great household. Amen. The Bible says, and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ Himself being the chief cornerstone. Amen. Amen. There's things that the apostles and the prophets did. Amen. The Word of God that's given to us under the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Amen. But the Bible says that it's all jointly fit together. We are being built here because of Jesus Christ. Him being the chief cornerstone. Hey. Amen. I want to just look this morning for a few moments, if we could, to Jesus being that chief cornerstone and Jesus being the rock. Amen. What is that to us this morning that Jesus Christ is the cornerstone? What is it that Jesus Christ is the rock? What is the depth of Scripture that He's teaching us here? Amen. I, I once again this morning, as our rock, Jesus Christ gives us several things. He is the rock of ages. Amen. He is the rock. Amen. The chief cornerstone on what we build our house. Amen. There's several things that I know. Amen. But I know that rocks are typically strong. I understand all kinds of things about rocks. Amen. The other night I sat with my girls. We were beside the fort. We were by, by the river. We had just walked down there. And we were looking around and they were looking at rocks. They had stood up on a great big huge rock. I was careful that they were sitting there uh, cautiously. I didn't want them to tumble on the rock or roll off on rocks because they are hard. They are strong. But I also realized that there are some rocks that aren't as strong as others. Any of you ever play with slate? I grew up in the coal region. And you all have to. And that slate that you can get a, a rock and you can beat on it. And that slate will break into pieces. I am aware that you may say, well, some rocks are not strong. I, I know this, that there are three types of rocks. There are sedimentary rocks. Uh, there are metam uh, metamorphic rocks. And there are ignesis rocks. Amen. Three different types. They can be broken down. Some are coarse. Some are very hard. They will not be broken. But how many of you have ever got a little grit of sand in your mouth when you're at the beach? Amen. How is that saying? It's hard. It's difficult. Amen. Uh, it's tough. Rocks are still strong. They have strength. Even if they were breaking down to their smallest fiber, they are strong. But there are some huge rocks that are not coarse in their nature, that are not slate, that will not easily be broken. There is strength in the rock. Amen. Amen. There is strength in the rock this morning. Amen. When we are weak, amen, when we are weary, when we are worried, amen, Christ provides for us strength. Thank you, Lord. Do you understand that we've been brought into this family of God? Amen. The chief cornerstone, the rock, amen, He's given to us in this household of faith that we have strength in Him this morning. The Word of God says in Psalms 18, verse number 2, The Lord is my rock and my fortress, my deliverer, my God, my strength. 
in whom I will trust, my buckler and the horn of my salvation and my high tower. Amen. This morning, the strength of our life is found in the rock of ages. Amen. That's cleft for you and I. That is where our strength is found. Amen. When you're feeling weary and wor uh, uh, worried, amen. When you're feeling, amen, overwhelmed, amen, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. That is where Thank God for the rock. Amen. We're going to be looking for several things this morning. Amen. The rock is our strength. Amen. The rock is also our security and our shelter. Uh, we know, and I'll talk more about it later, Jesus talked about the wise man and the foolish man. Amen. Building their home. Amen. The wise men build his house upon the rock in the wide because there was security and there was shelter in that being built upon the rock. Amen. Years ago, amen, in, in primitive times, amen, uh, 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 stones were used to put in the door of things. Amen. As a lock, as a barrier. Some stones themselves were used as a door that the enemy and weather could not get in. Amen. Uh, there was no attacks that could get around because there was security. I like what Isaiah says. In Isaiah 32, verse 1 and 2, the Bible says, Behold, a king shall reign in righteousness, and princes shall rule in judgment, and a man shall be as a hiding place from the wind, and a cover from the tempest, as rivers of water, and a dry place, as a shadow of a great rock in a weary land. Amen. You know what's important this morning is knowing that we have security and we have shelter in the rock. Yeah. Brother Landon, you were talking to me this morning about being outside. He said it was hot outside. He said, thank God he was standing in the shadow of the pine tree. Amen. I'm glad oftentimes. Have you ever been somewhere? Uh, 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 we, we were out a little bit over the weekend, did some things as a family, and then there were some warmer parts of the day, and I found my girls, they didn't even realize what they were doing, but they were gravitating to the tree, or they were gravitating to that place where there was a shadow. Because you know why? Because there was protection there. Amen. Uh, the writer of Isaiah says that there's protection in the rock from the river so that you stay dry. Amen. There's protection in the rock. Amen. That, that when the wind blows, amen, the tempest, it can't get to you because there's protection and there's shelter there. Amen. There's a shadow of the great rock. Amen. That keeps us uh, cool on very hot days. Amen. Thank God for the rock. Amen. 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 Do you need a shelter today? Amen. Do you need security today? Everything that you need is found in the rock of ages. Amen. This relationship with God, this family of God, amen, all started with the chief cornerstone, Jesus Christ. Amen. amen. True story of a lady. Amen. Mrs. Kaiser and her husband, Mr. Kaiser, I went to the doctor, and the doctor said to Mr. Kaiser, Sir, your kidney function is a little below 25%. It's not good. Uh, uh, your, your kidneys are not functioning. They're not getting the toxins out of your body. You're going to become septic. These are your, 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 your alternatives of what you need to do. Hearing the word of that Mr. and Mrs. Kaiser said to them, it was overwhelming to them. Their life was changing. It was much for them to think about. Mrs. Kaiser said she went to the Word of God. And she said she randomly opened up the Word of God and said, God, I need you to give me something from your Word that will help me in this moment, in the moments that lies ahead. She opened up the Psalms, chapter number 94. She began to read verse number 19 and verse number 22. The Bible says, In the multitude of my thoughts within me, 
Thy comforts delight my soul. Amen. When there's many, many thoughts are running through your head. Amen. Our, our minds sometimes don't shut down. We sometimes want our bodies to shut down. But our minds don't shut down and allow us the rest that we need. What is the comfort? Amen. The comforts are found in Jesus Christ. She went on and down to read, But the Lord is my defense, and my God is the rock of my refuge. She memorized these verses. Amen. Uh, she closed her Bible and she rested in the calm of these verses. And her husband's condition this morning continued to get worse. But she said she found steadiness and she found something to give her strength in the middle of trials. Amen. The rock can calm our storms. Amen. Amen. The storms may rage, it may blow, but in the rock, the wind, the tempest can't get to us. The water can't get there. We're kept dry. Amen. The key to the day can't get there because there's a shadow in the rock of ages. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank God that He is our rock. I think the greatest thing about Jesus Christ that the Word of God allows us to know that He is our rock, is the rock is our salvation. He gives us something to grab onto in the middle of the quicksands of life. You understand what I'm talking about? Sometimes you feel like you take a step and you're sinking. And what I understand about quicksand is the more you move, the quicker you go and the faster you sink. So what do you want? And you know what? You find yourself in that quicksand and what do you want to do? You want to move to get out of it. It's only the natural instinct. But God says that in the quicksand of life that He's not the sand, but He's the rock. That you can grab onto and have salvation. Thank you, Thank you. Amen. When everything else is shifting, Amen. when everything else seems to be sucking us under, when everything else seems to be uncertainty and our faith is unknown, amen, Jesus Christ says, I am the rock of ages. Amen. And he says, uh, I, I like what Psalms 18.2 says, The Lord is my rock and my fortress, my deliverer, my God, my strength. Amen. Psalm 62.2 says, He is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be greatly moved. Amen. I'm not going to fall in the quicksands of life. My feet are planted upon the rock of my salvation. Amen. I'm going to be okay. Thank you, Lord. I don't know if you've ever noticed before, but rocks have a stillness to them. When I was a, a boy, we they were building the lake that is close to our house, and they came across this lake of this big rock that had a very unique design, almost like it has triangles, and they called it the Waffle Rock. I was a boy then. My dad said to me, I remember this rock being here when I was a boy. Uh, the kids around knew about this rock, but it was discovered by the Corps of Engineers as they were doing all the things that they needed to do to, to excavate the land to get the lake there. Today, that rock is no longer where it is, only because man has moved it. But in the past 25 years, it's set in the same place at, 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 at the shelter of the, uh, of the lake's overlook. It sits there, and it is still. Let me tell you what, it is not about to move if you lean against it. It's not going to move if you shout at it. It's not going to move if you hit it, you kick it, you spit at it. It's not going to move. It is still. You know what I'm talking about? Yes. Amen. Rocks are still. Sometimes we need to be reminded that that's what Christ is for us. A place that we can go to and just be that we can just be. I love what Matthew 11, 28 says. It says, Come unto me, all, uh, all ye that labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Very strange name. Where, where uh, a sir uh, uh, lived in the Psalms of Liberia. And he heard that in America it was very rich. And so uh, Weir uh, decided that he was going to stow away in a crate of a ship and he was going to come to America. 
And as he strode away, he came to America and uh, he found himself being involved in all kinds of things that he didn't desire to be involved in as a means to survive. He found himself taking things and he was accused of robbery. He found himself spending time in the uh, 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 Kansas State Penitentiary. And where uh, uh, he heard Dr. Wilson, a uh, minister, come in one day and he preached and he preached on uh, Matthew 11, 28. Come unto me, all ye that, 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 that are, 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 are labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Dr. Wilson said he felt like his message was a failure. He felt like no one was listening to him. He said, but a few days later, he got a, a message from, from, from where, where, sir. And he said, he said to him, I, I listened to your message. He said, and I gave my heart to Jesus Christ. I come from Liberia to the United States, wanting some prosperity, but I found myself in prison. And all of a sudden, uh, Weir began to, to give himself to God, and his release was soon up. And he said, I don't want to be released. I want to stay another three years. And there he ministered in the Kansas State Pen Penitentiary upon his, his, his uh, being discharged from the penitent penitentiary. He went back to Liberia and he said, I found gold in America. Not in what I found on the streets or not what I found in Rome, but what I found in the stillness of Jesus Christ. I wonder this morning how long it's been since we've been still and we've just stood on the rock of the ages. And we've come unto him and we found real rest. Rest that is needful for us spiritually. Where we just come and rest in Christ. Not only does he give satisfaction and stillness, not only does he give security and shelter, amen, but he gives. I think I already said a real satisfaction. In 1 Corinthians 10, 4, the Word of God says, And all drank the same spiritual drink, for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them. And that rock was Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. How long has it been since you found water? And the rock. I'm not talking about bitter water, but I'm talking about sweet water. Amen. That satisfies us. And that satisfies everything in our life, just as was provided for the Israelites in the Old Testament. Amen. And Jesus became a fulfillment of that rock. Amen. That you and I can drink of. Amen. That's what uh, uh, Paul said in 1 Corinthians 10 7. Amen. Uh, as the psalmist said, For he satisfies the longing soul, and he fills the hungry with goodness. Amen. God is able to satisfy the rock of ages in the place of satisfaction. Amen. It's by a place of stillness and security, a place where you and I, amen, can find salvation. Amen. But it's a place where we can find satisfaction. Amen. Because God also gives stability. One thing that's unique about the cornerstone is I've never built, I'm not an architect, I don't know a lot about it. But what I do understand is, is that the cornerstone is very important in the house. That first corner that is laid, because everything else that is laid after that is based upon the security of that cornerstone. It's got to be straight. It's got to be secure. Because the entire building of the network relies upon that cornerstone of the days. Hey man, so here it is. That when we build our life upon Jesus Christ, He is the cornerstone. Hey man, what did, what did the Word of God say? Amen. That we're no longer strangers, but we're fellow citizens. 
and we're built upon the foundation upon the prophets and we're built upon the cornerstone which is Jesus Christ. Everything that the prophets did, amen, everything that the apostles did, everything that we built our life upon in Jesus Christ is based upon that cornerstone. Amen, he dictates where the walls are. Amen, he dictates the structure. Amen, thank God that we have a rock. Amen, that gives us stability. Amen, and there's no greater stability than in Jesus Christ. Amen, it's not found in wealth. It's not found in education. It's not found in, in a wonderful personality. Amen, it's found in Jesus Christ. Amen, that is the stability of life this morning. Amen, Amen. he gives steadiness. He gives stability to our life. But what, what did Jesus teach in his parable of the wise man and the foolish man? He said, the wise man who built his house upon the rocks. And when the rains came down, you know that little song? And when the rains came down and the floods came up, amen, the guy who built his house upon the rock, amen, it stood firm, amen, it was secure. But the fellow was foolish and building his house upon the fleeting things of this life, that when the rains came down and the floods came up, what did his house do? It fell flat. Amen, there's stability. When we build our life upon Jesus Christ. Sister Susan, it may have been two years, but the stability of knowing that God was working and moving. Amen. God was working in Chris. God was working in you. God was working in the church. Amen. This faith community. Amen. As we partnered in prayer with you for Chris. Amen. God was working. God has the framework all together. Thank you. Hallelujah. That's what we can trust Him for this morning. And I love that when God does it, He brings unity. There is singularity. Hey Amen. When the cornerstone wall is laid, the cornerstone and the walls come together, He brings them jointly together. You know why we can work together in harmony as a church? Because Jesus Christ is the cornerstone. Do you know why there can be harmony in our homes? Amen. Do you know why there doesn't have to be friction? Do you know why there doesn't have to be chaos and confusion? Because our homes are built upon Jesus Christ. And He's the chief cornerstone. And all the walls come together in unity with Him. Amen. All of our relationships, amen, with the people of God, our relationship with ourselves, amen, our relationships in general, amen, can have harmony and unity because Jesus Christ is at the corner of them. I love what Ephesians 21, uh, 2 verse 21 says, In whom all the building fitly framed together groweth unto an holy temple uh, in the Lord. In whom ye are also built together for a habitation of God through the Spirit. Amen. This is a habitation of God. Our homes are built that God may be the inhabitant of it. Because He's the chief cornerstone. Our church is built that Christ is the cornerstone. Amen. The walls being you and I being built together, but the inhabitants of the Spirit of God. Amen. Because the rock of angels is there at the corner. I've got to move quickly. But I'm glad that our rock provides steerage or direction. Psalms 31, 3 says, For thou art my rock and my fortress. Therefore, for thy name's sake, lead me and guide me. And this, of course, every one of us are on this journey of life. Our journeys will be different. The paths will look different. The, the slopes will look different. The terrain will be different. But the destination remains the same. Amen. And on this journey, you've got to understand that there will be many forks in the road. But not every fork in the road will lead to the destination God has designed for you. Amen. That's why you need the direction of God. Amen. There will be crisis in our life. 
Crisis can be a moment in which we de we determine: Am I going to believe the word of God, or am I going to, am I going to believe some falsehood? Amen. Uh, that, that's more appealing to what I'm feeling right now. The word of God, I've got to trust it by faith. Amen. So at the fork in the road, you've got to trust God by faith. God, what's the direction that you want me to go? God will lead us because He's the rock. How many of you are familiar with a woman named Cora Tedlin? Her testimony is amazing. I'm glad as a child I could hear her on, 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 on programs like Focus on the Family. Just amazing. Amazing as you listen to her. And Cora Tedlin's parents used uh, uh, Psalms uh, 32, verse number 8, uh, as, as, as their family verse. Let me read it to you. I will instruct thee, and I will teach thee the way which thou shalt go. And I will guide thee with mine eye. Be ye not as the horse or as the mule which hath no understanding, whose mouth must be guided with a bit and a bridle, lest they come near unto thee. Corinthians, whose parents led by this verse, amen, that I will instruct thee and I will teach thee the way which thou shalt go. I will guide thee with mine eye. Isn't it interesting that our family was divided placed in concentration camps uh, during the war, and how that Corey was the only one who survived out of her family. God gave her a platform to speak all over Western Europe, and then God opened up a door for her to come to America to speak. However, when she went to get uh, her traveling documents, she was refused. Uh, the, the, the individual kept refusing her. The Dutch official was, uh, uh, as she said, hard as granite and would not flinch in processing her request. In the middle of it all, she ran into someone she did not know, and it was instructed that they were her cousin. Uh, she said, do we know each other? And she said, I, I know that we haven't seen each other for years. The man said, but you are my cousin. If you ever need anything, I work in this building. Let me know. She said, that's the building I go to to try to get my paperwork done to go to America. He said, if you need help, this is my number. She went back to the same calendar when some man was very obstinate, would not process her paperwork. She said, this is my cousin. This is his number. He got on the phone and he dialed the number and began to talk. And within a few moments, without hesitation, amen, her paperwork was processed. And she came to share her testimony within the United States of America and has so dramatically touched hundreds and thousands of people, amen, with her word and with her message, God's tramp. But God has a way of making a way. We have to trust Him. He knows avenues and doors that we do not know. Amen. We don't have to force our way. Amen. But we have to trust the rock of ages to make the way. He is the rock. Amen. He is our completion. How many has ever went to a building before. And maybe once the building was done, I enjoyed Sister Jenny by the day in our little park down there in Lullaton. They have a nice little memorial there. Beautiful, beautiful. Nice little park you have kids. Go to go to Lullaton. I encourage it. Amen. Almost right behind Brother David's house. Beautiful little memorial. The stone is set in, in honor of an individual who served our country. But how many have found that most of the time when the building is built, there can be a memorial place there, a stone. When God builds the building, the memorial needs to be there that this belongs to Christ. That He is a living stone. Peter said that He is a living stone. The stone, the stone is a stumbling block. But I thank God for me that this stone is a pedestal. Sister Holly, if you come, give me a few more minutes. I just want to share a few things. This stone is a pedal, pedestal. I lay in Zion for a foundation, a stone. For other foundations can, can no man lay than that that is laid, which is Christ Jesus. I like what the songwriter wrote when he said, On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. 
this stone is a secure faith. This stone is a stillness. This stone is where I'm building my life, where the unity of the Spirit works and the Spirit inhabits the building that I build. Amen. But I didn't tell you something that's so important that Christ is a proven stone. Hey Amen. He's a proven stone. He's a tried stone. Everything that you and I could ever face, He's already proven faithful and true against it. You may say, Brother Seville, you don't know the temptation I face. Jesus Christ faced temptations as well. Remember, as he was led away to the wilderness and the enemy provoked him and tested him, but he proved himself to be true. He is the proven stone. Whatever you have need of in your life, he's proven to be. Why don't you stand upon him? Why don't you find the security and the shelter that you need? Why don't you find the stillness that you need? Peter said it this way. He said he's a precious stone. Now, some of you may have some stones that are precious. Some folks believe in what he brings. Some folks don't. I gave my wife a wedding ring. And so in the middle of that is a precious stone. By the way, yesterday was 10 years since I asked my wife for it today. 24th, okay. It was this one. Okay, let's just erase that. Erase all those things that I just said. I just want you to know this week, this week was 10 years since I asked this beautiful woman to be my wife. Amen. And so, if we took our daughters to the river when we took my mom home at the beginning of the month, and we stood at those the beautiful rock ledge that's there and we watched the water come in swiftly, go gently out. Didn't mean too much for our girls, but sure was a, a, a nice little memorial for us ten years later. Ten years later. And so here we find that Peter said it was a precious stone. The Lord needs a piece of value. The most valuable thing in our life should be Jesus Christ. I love my wife. And she's valuable to me. But my value of Christ has to be the greatest. And then it's her. And then it's my children. And then it's my church. Those are the valuable things. Because he's valuable. He's the stone which the builders rejected. To me, he's the most valuable. Amen. He's the rock of ages. He's the one that I build my life upon. So Paul, Peter said he was precious. So precious is something of value. But in our house, almost two years ago, I think it was Brother Johnson, Sister Tiffany, and family, gave our girls a little birthday gift. And for two years, a little curly haired girl has a little a little cat called Precious. And it's a very precious time. I've made trips back here to this church after Sunday night and Tuesday night services because Precious was not here. I've searched high and low at the house at night sometimes because Precious was somewhere we couldn't find it because Precious is Precious to a little girl. There she is. Can you hold her up, Bella? Can you show everybody precious? There she is. You know, it's precious to Bella. But Peter said that this rock, that's our cornerstone, should be precious to us. If we've lost them somewhere, we need to search. We need to go out of our way to find the endearment that we have to Jesus Christ. Because he's precious to me. He's my rock. He's my security. He's my stillness. He's my salvation. Amen. He's, he's, he's everything that I need. He's so positional. He puts everything together. 
Amen. One day, this rock, amen, he's going to be the one that's going to come and he's going to rain down. Amen. But do you find yourself lost in the rock of ages? If you would, would you stand with me over the sanctuary this morning? Amen. I want us to do something different. Sometimes it's easy to come and kneel in prayer. The Bible doesn't give us a particular way in which we should pray. I do believe the bend, bending of the knee is the bending of the heart. Amen. But I want to ask you all around the sanctuary, would you find a place of prayer right now? Amen. Amen. Is Jesus Christ precious to you? Do you just need a place that you can stand stillness and cast all your burden upon the Lord? Amen. Does your life seem to be out of unity and out of sync? Is it because you've not built upon Jesus Christ as a chief cornerstone? Amen. As Sister Holly sings this and plays this, I want you to imagine yourself either standing upon a huge rock where all around you is shifting, sinking sand, or I want you to imagine yourself someplace in the cleft of the rock and the hand of God sheltering you from the water and from the wind and from the heat. Amen. Would you just enter into the rock today? Amen. Let's celebrate the rock of ages. Amen. This morning, Sister Holly, sing that. Amen. As the Spirit of God ministers to our heart and we're prayerful all around the sanctuary. I'm going to join you in prayer at my pew as well. Amen. Let's just pray to the rock of ages. Hallelujah.